I can tell you that we had a summit with uh, President Biden in March with our, our president, our prime minister. I was there. Uh, we had, I think, 90 minutes of conversation. President Biden was focused, strategic, and quite humorous, actually. <laughs> um, uh, Slip-ups happen. You know, I, I was just meeting with your journalists and I made a slip-up and I didn't correct myself. <laughs> um, but um, we need America to lead and President Biden is uh, leading the effort on Ukraine for which we are very grateful. I just used the wrong name on the air before you came in. I did a slip-up and I do it all the time. We're trying to figure out what counts as a slip mm -hmm. and what qualifies as deterioration. And I would ask you, you're not a doctor, we don't have to dwell on your view on that necessarily, but this is a very important moment for the alliance. We're talking about the potential for enormous change here domestically, politically, in the United States. There's a lot of noise around uh, the president, as we already know, which could have been a bit of a distraction. But there's also great uncertainty about the trajectory of politics in a number of European nations, having seen elections in France, having seen a change in leadership in the UK. Some are calling this a peak for NATO, that it might not be the same following this moment. How does the alliance survive the uncertainty globally, politically now? Well, let's unpick um, what you've just said. Um, there's change in the UK, um, but I am assured by the new government and the foreign minister visited me at home in Poland on the third day of, his, uh, mm. uh, of him holding office that uh, Ukraine will be solid. Um, I mean, the Britain will be solid on Ukraine and Prime Minister Starmer reaffirmed that. Mm -hmm. In France, uh, some people worried that the, uh, the nationalist uh, side of the... Uh, politics will take over. That hasn't happened. Uh, Putin is constantly uh, counting on our divisions and on, on, on our inefficiency, and he doesn't understand our uh, psychology, and he doesn't understand that we are in it for the long haul. Uh, look, as you said, I took part in the summit yesterday. I was, I was impressed at how um, consistent and powerful and persuasive uh, almost all the leaders of the alliance were in saying we are in it for the long run until uh, Ukraine is a secure, independent nation. And uh, uh, we have some good decisions uh, out of this summit, and President Biden is the author of these good decisions. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, we don't know that he'll be President Biden beyond January for Well, that's that. democracy for you. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. And even the president of Poland, President Duda, has told Joe and I that if it does turn out to be a second Donald Trump administration, he can work with Donald Trump. We hear it frequently from other diplomats such as yourself, a willingness to work with whomever. I guess my question is, do you really believe that Donald Trump will be as willing to work with you as President Biden? We keep in touch with the administration and with the alternative administration, as we do uh, with any other democracy. Uh, we have a cohabitation in Poland. Uh, mm -hmm. The president is from, uh, from a more Trumpian side of Polish politics, and he's kept in touch with uh, uh, President Trump all along, and uh, and we encourage him. I personally, uh, of course, work with the administration, but I talk to uh, President Trump's people, and some of the things that they tell me about uh, what they plan to do are, are, are interesting and creative. Hmm. Not frightening. Politics is a diff difficult business. Uh, uh, some of these things are very controversial. Uh, we were disappointed that the American uh, supplemental took so long, mm -hmm. but eventually uh, the, the good thing happened. Um, we hope that President Trump will want to be a winner and a winner of uh, um, getting to a fair peace uh, uh, in Ukraine, which means Ukraine enjoying its, its liberty. Do you worry about the idea of redefining Article 5, as Donald Trump has suggested, based on the level of financial contribution? Is that a creative idea? Well, 
he was right to insist that uh, allies should spend more. Mm -hmm. And I publicly defended and him. And many have. Even in style. Because yeah. when pre predecessors did it politely, it didn't work. How about that? Okay, so the combination of President Trump's and Joe Biden's pressure and the war in Ukraine yeah. resulted in the fact that 23 out of the 32 allies now spend 2% of GDP on defense. Poland spends 4 Mm. And we are going to spend five next year. We are number one in NATO, including the United States, in proportion, obviously, mm. because we, uh, we are no longer in eternal post-Cold War peace. Mm. Um, uh, so, uh, but to think about, so this is a good thing and that was needed. Mm. But an alliance is not a neighborhood um, security company. <laughs> Take Iceland, which is a NATO member, yeah. which hardly has a, uh, a defense budget at all, mm -hmm. but it has a, a other vital assets, uh, its territory, its ability to refuel, sure. to bring. Sure. Um, when we rallied around the United States, uh, when countries were spending under 2%, we sent first Poland, one brigade to Afghanistan, another brigade to Iraq. Mm -hmm. Others did the same. Um, so the level of spending shouldn't be the only yardstick. Just in our final moment with you, something else that came out of this summit was the labeling of China as a decisive enabler of Russia. And we also know that Donald Trump has quite hawkish toward China, as is Joe Biden for that matter. And I wonder if to you, whatever the outcome of the election, does it seem that the U.S. is orienting more toward that adversary, leaving Europe to be the one who has to step up defense militarily against the threat of Russia? Uh, sequencing matters. Uh, if we um, enable Ukraine to win, to defend its uh, independence and borders in the next couple of hours, then I think... Uh, other theaters uh, could become a priority. And actually helping Ukraine win, I believe, would also moderate China's behavior. Mm -hmm. China is respecting our thickest red line, which is not to send arms mm -hmm. to Russia, unlike Iran or North Korea. Uh, and yes, China could actually bring their vassal Putin to heel mm -hmm. and tell him to end this war. And um, we are making these representations to the Chinese leadership, and I hope they act on them.